Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be doing a trying new makeup. I'm going to try to do kind of like a pink Valentine's look just because of the products I have. So I really want to try out the new Rare Beauty products I purchased in my previous Sephora haul. I have the blush. I also have the liquid eyeshadow and then the glossy balm. So I thought we would use those products, but I also want to test out the new Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Freeze that I picked up as well. So I thought that I would show you, you know, how to use it or how I would use it, see if it holds, etc. So we will try this. Also really excited to use the new Morphe foundation. So when they came out with the foundation and concealer previously, it wasn't well received, but this is their new filter effect soft focus foundation. They also have a brush they sent over and a sponge, which is like microfiber. And this thing is huge. It wasn't this big until I wet it, but interested to try these products out. Also for the eyes, I thought with the Rare Beauty shadow, we could play around with this Nudie Patootie Volume 2 from Laura Lee Los Angeles. This is a really pretty kind of romantic color story. And then I have this Kimchi Chic Puff Puff Pass powder that I want to demo for you guys. I've been really enjoying this brand. I bought like five things from it and I've been quite impressed so far. I also have the Morphe Make It Big Mascara. This is actually getting pretty bad reviews, but in my past two videos that I haven't been wearing lashes, this is what I've been wearing and I swear it makes my lashes look really big and I have like no lashes. So I wanna demo that and kind of talk about my thoughts. And then a couple random things. I have a new Milani Supercharged Facial Mist I wanna give a go when we're done with our makeup. And then also, this beautiful Danessa Myricks highlighting palette. Uh, she was actually the makeup artist for the Morphe campaign with Shayla, and Shayla looked stunning. If you don't know who Danessa Myricks is, she has a makeup line, but she is like a phenomenal makeup artist. So she has this highlighting palette that I got a while ago. I just haven't used it yet. So kind of a random array of products, but I thought we would just chat get ready, do a romantic, you know, look for Valentine's Day and try new makeup. So if you're new here, I would love for you to subscribe and let's go ahead and begin. So I've got you zoomed in. I went ahead and did the base of my brow and then I did use the P. Louise base. This is in the shade, I believe, Rumor 2. This is just a base for eyeshadow. So I used this and then I used a very light dusting of the kimchi powder. If you hear loud noises, my husband is shoveling the driveway. We got like six inches of snow. He got work off or he's working from home today because the roads are bad. So, you know, he's not used to being quiet. So back to the eyeshadow. There's five different shades. I picked up the pink one, Nearly Rose. It is truly just like a soft pink shade. Essentially, you're supposed to apply this to the lid and blend it with your finger or a brush. I'm gonna use this as a base to kind of just blow out all over the crease and my eye. And then I'm gonna go in with a Laura Lee palette and maybe play it up a little bit. But I really wanna test this to see what it looks like for a one and done kind of situation, if it blends, if it's pigmented, etc. So I'm gonna just apply this to my eye, again, you don't have to be perfect or you shouldn't have to be with a product like this. It should be pretty easy to blend. It does kind of feel like a powder when you blend it out, almost like it goes from a cream to powder. My favorite formula for these liquid eyeshadows has to be the chocolate melted ones from Too Faced. They are just super easy to work with. To be honest, that was quite easy. I didn't have any struggles. It blended nicely. Now, obviously, I don't look amazing right now because I don't have anything on my face and my brows are half done. But in terms of a base or a one and done, I feel like this is pretty easy. I don't really see anybody struggling with this just because it didn't take any finesse at all. So this is what the eyeshadow looks like. It worked perfectly, I have no complaints. If you are a one and done type of person, I feel that you would get a lot of use out of this. Just make sure that you choose a color that suits your skin tone, although they are quite pink, you know, they're in the pinky rose, peachy family, so there's no really like browns, maybe she'll expand. But my first impression on this is it was easy to work with. I didn't have any issues. So we're gonna go in now with the Nudie Patootie 2. This is from Laura Lee Los Angeles. I have to say, 
First and foremost, I am so deeply sorry for what she's going through. She lost her mother to COVID, which I cannot even imagine that pain. Um, I just feel so horrible. She really is such a gem. I've met her a few times at events and she didn't owe me anything and she was so nice to me, like incredibly nice to me. Um, just funny, outgoing, easy to talk to. I just feel horrible for what she's going through losing her mother to COVID. Like, it's just been rough on her, so I wanted to send my condolences. But I did want to use her palette that she sent over. Now, this is not brand new. She sent this a few weeks ago. Again, I just had so many videos, other video ideas that I haven't gotten to all this new makeup. So I thought we would just play with this. Maybe add, you know, one of the shimmers onto the lid. Maybe add a little bit of depth. So I think I'm going to go in to the shade down here, low cut, and use this on the outer corner. I am interested to see how shadows blend on top of this because it does feel like a soft powder finish. I'm hoping that it doesn't grab. So I'm really going to put this quite low. And I just want to add a little bit of dimension. Obviously, if you want to use these rare beauty shadows by themselves, but just for the sake of trying new stuff. So I am noticing that it does seem to be sticking a little bit, so I don't know if you would want to apply more mattes on top of these liquid shadows. It seems to be sticking on the edge. I'm just gonna blend it and kind of do my best here. So I think I'm gonna go on the lid with the shade Cheeky. It's so beautiful and intense. It's almost like a muted, I don't know, purple pink kind of hybrid. So let's go ahead and just, oh yeah, that's beautiful. Pop this pretty high up. I want it to kind of go above the crease to give me that sparkle look. Very, very glittery, beautiful. So these are what the eyes are looking like. I'm gonna go ahead and do a winged liner off camera, come back and we will use that Morphe mascara as well as all of the other products. So now that I did my wings, I wanna go in with the new Morphe Make It Big mascara. I have to say, this has bad reviews. It's, a lot of people are saying it's super clumpy, they don't like it. Honestly, I actually texted my friend Cheryl and I was like, that Morphe mascara makes my lashes look big. Like for me, I feel comfortable not wearing lashes when I use this. And she looked it up on Sephora Canada and she's like, the reviews are horrible. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like I don't know what it is. So the packaging is kind of weighted. It's this matte black packaging. I will say this does get or can get clumpy. It's one of those that you might want to wipe off on the component. So I could see why that would be annoying to people. To be honest, I haven't really noticed it like when I use it, but it does great things for my lashes. I don't know. It gives them volume and length. So I'm going to wipe it off a little bit and we'll just go in. It's a very slippy mascara. So I would say more of a wet formula. But with any kind of eye look like this with a big wing and eyeshadow, I always do lashes. But in my day to day, this has been the mascara I've been reaching for. I guess it sort of reminds me of a mini version of the Too Faced Damn Girl, which is another one of my favorites. It has a similar wand, but it's just not as big as this. But it has that same like volume and length. So I like it, but just be forewarned that you might want to read some reviews before you try this for me. It works, but I don't know. Other people are saying that it's clumpy. That was the main thing I kept seeing. I got a package of lashes from Tati Lashes, and I think I'm gonna use these today. These are the Style Hustler 3D Foam Mink. This is the Pretty Little Thing Tati Lashes collaboration. So I'm gonna throw these on, and then we will start on our base. So now let's move on to foundation. I have the new Morphe foundation. I'm really interested to try this because their first foundation and concealer did not go over well. This is the Filter Effect Soft Focus Foundation. This is supposed to be medium to full coverage, 40 different shades. So it says hyaluronic acid for hydration, poor blurring pigments, natural buildable coverage, free of oils, fragrances, and parabens, long wearing, sweat proof, and transfer proof. Comes in a frosted glass bottle. So they sent me three shades. I have light eight here, but I also have medium nine. So light eight is a light medium golden and medium nine is a medium neutral. So I think I wanna just pump this out. This looks a little bit light for the medium. So there's that medium nine. Let me swatch the light eight. Definitely is warmer, we'll see. Just cause I have a fresh tan on. 
Well, I think I actually am gonna go with the medium because it's more neutral, I feel like this is a little bit too yellow because it has that golden undertone. So along with the foundation, they sent this sponge and it's kind of interesting. It has a slanted tip here. It's the microfiber feel like the Juno and Co sponges, but it really got large when I wet it. It was about half this size before, but they also did send over a brush. This is the E63, which I thought was interesting an airbrush brush from them. And I don't know if I have anything with this shape. So I thought we would kind of use both and see what we think. I'm gonna pump out two pumps. It's a pretty thick foundation and I think it oxidizes because when I first pump out that medium, it looks a little bit light, but then it sort of warms up. So I guess we'll just, yeah, so you see how it looks pretty light there compared to my self tan, but we're just gonna see how it blends out. Hopefully we can make it work. So I'm gonna go ahead and use, okay, I already, I'm like, don't like this sponge. And that shade looks like, damn. I might mix in a little bit of that light shade just for the golden tone to it. I'm gonna switch to this brush. So it feels like a medium coverage. Feels pretty matte, to be honest. I just don't know if I'm loving either of these tools with it. It's quite thick. Okay, I'm switching brushes to a brush I would typically use. This is the Laura Lee Los Angeles L11. I'm just not a fan of those See how it's like slipping? Like look, it's like not wanting to stick to the skin. Can you see that? How it's like slipping off my nose? I'm like having a hard time on what way to apply it. Do you see it lifting? So here's what the foundation looks like. Now I will say the shade is a little bit light for myself tan, but it'll work for me, you know, other times. So I will say this one runs a little bit light, like medium seems a little light to me. Uh, this took like three pumps and a ton of blending. I wasn't a fan with this. And then this seemed to smear, this foundation seemed to smear like back and forth, which is not something I deal with a lot. I do like see myself liking this brush, but with other foundations. Something about this was so matte that it would just slide back and forth. I feel like it looks pretty good on my skin. I mean, once I build it up, but I will say I had to use like three pumps. Not necessarily because the coverage was low, but it was just smearing. I don't know, that was weird. I don't foresee this being a favorite of mine, unfortunately, but we'll just keep on going. I'm gonna go ahead and use a cream bronzer today just because I'm using a cream blush. I don't typically use cream bronzers that much, but one of the ones I do enjoy is the Fenty Beauty. I still feel like I have patching. This is the shade Macchiato. I just tend to get patching with cream bronzers. I think that's what like scares me about them. I'm gonna go in with this Morphe brush though because we already have some of that foundation on there. I'm gonna try to just kind of warm up my skin. This is a very buildable formula, but I just feel like some people's skin is like perfect for creams. Some people's just gets very patchy and that's me. Like I could use the same foundation, the same primer, the same concealer as someone else, but for some reason it just patches. I actually like feel like I would like this brush, but just with a different foundation. I literally got so <laughs> sidetracked that I didn't even do concealer. I'm gonna go in with my Giorgio Armani Power Fabric in the shade three. I just bought this uh, as a, another shade because I have the shade four. It's just a little bit yellow. I literally forgot about this. Like I just started doing cream bronzer. So I'm actually gonna use this Tarte brush. I love this for concealer. It's like the perfect size. It's not too small, but it's also not like massive. And it's like double-ended so you can use powder on the other side. Before I go in and set, I wanna go in with the Rare Beauty blush. This is the Melting Blush, and I got the shade Nearly Rose, which is supposed to be a pink. 
It swatches quite pigmented when you swatch it with your finger, but then when you blend it out, it seems to be very sheer. So I'm excited to see how it plays on the face. I did not set my face yet. That's what I've heard. It doesn't work on a set face, which is something that personally I don't enjoy, but I will play by the rules so that we have a fair shot. So I actually just took a beauty blender and applied it to the beauty blender and then stamped it on my hand. And I'm using the lightest pressure. So it's definitely showing up. You just, I think you just have to really finesse it. I know her previous, oh, it's pretty. Her previous blushes were super pigmented. These are definitely pigmented, but I feel like you just have to build them up more so. Like on my hand, I just have quite a bit, but I'm kind of taking off my hand and I'm using super light pressure. And of course, I'm gonna use a lot of blush because YOLO and I like blush. And, ooh. It actually is pretty. I didn't think I was going to enjoy this. I would be interested to try it on a set face, even though people say it doesn't work, but it's really pretty. So now I wanna set the face, and this is where I have such a hard time with creams because I don't really know how to go around them and set. Definitely have to set my T-zone, but I actually prefer to set like everywhere. So I'm gonna kind of do a targeted setting. This is the Kimchi Chic Puff Puff Pass Set and Bake Powder. I picked up the shade Translucent 03, and I have been really liking this, and you get a ton of product in here. Like I really, really have been liking this. It's quite smoothing, it lasts all day. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure I don't have any creases. And I am going to apply the powder pretty heavily in my T-zone and then lightly kind of blend under my eye to set. Also gonna go around my mouth, nose, Really the T-zone, that's where I get the most oily. And then I'm taking my Sonia G and I'm going to do kind of under the blush and cream bronzer. I'm also gonna take a little bit of my Jouer Dark Powder and apply, oh bitch. See, this is my problem, damn. It wants to grab because we put that cream down. Okay, I'm gonna have to like blend that out. All right, so now I wanna jump into brows. I did the bottom part of my brows, but I wanna finish them off. And typically what I do is use either my Benefit or my Refi Beauty to underline my brows. And then I go in with something to hold them. So I've been loving the Refi Beauty and you just brush it through and then I really just push the hairs against my skin. This has a white tint, but it doesn't show up once you put it on. I'm interested to try this ABH. So essentially this is a brow freeze styling wax. So it comes in a little pot like this, super easy. You don't have to wet it or do anything like that to my knowledge. So I'm gonna go ahead and just use my spoolie on my Benefit and grab quite a bit of product on there. It feels tacky. Pull my mirror closer and we're going to Oh yeah, run this through the brows. I may have used a little bit too much. I'm gonna take whatever's left on this other side. It feels like a brow gel to me, but I like the fact that it's in a pot and you don't have to you know, squeeze it out of anything, but I also like the Refi too. So I'm gonna let it sit for a second, and then what I like to do is use my spoolie or my brow pencil and push it up to really set it onto the skin. So I'll have to update you guys on the wear of this, like if it stays stuck up. But if you want fluffy brows, I mean, this did the job. It really just stood the brow hairs up. So from there, I just go ahead and fill in the rest and we're good to go. I think this is gonna be a winner. I really do like the Refi too as well. It's a little bit harder to get because it's an influencer-owned brand and I think it's from, I think she, Jess Hunt is from the UK. 
So you definitely are gonna have to wait for shipping. This is just a little bit more accessible. Doesn't feel like super tacky or anything. So now I wanna move on to finish off the eyes. I'm gonna jump back into the Laura Lee palette. And I think I'm just gonna go in with this shade again, low cut, and just kind of smoke this on the outer lower half of my eye. And then taking a blending brush and blending that. I am gonna take the deepest shade called Risqué, just really close up on the lash line here. And then with that same kind of glittery shade, I'm gonna grab Cheeky again. I'm gonna use it on a tiny little brush and put a tiny bit in the center of my lower lash line. So for highlighter, I wanna go into this Danessa Myricks Light Work Palette. This is her lighter uh, shade range of her highlight palette. She has two, so this is a lighter one and then there's a deeper one. I think I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna mix this white shade with a little bit of this kind of pinky shade. Hopefully it will work together. I have not tried this formula, I've just swatched it. And I'm gonna use my Sonia G Sculpt 2. Ooh, okay, wow, <laughs> that's intense. Ooh, holy moly, I feel like I'm getting a little bit of a white cast, so I'm going to actually stick to just the pink, which is called Piece of Cake. Wow, that is pigmented. I mean, that is some highlight. <laughs> So for lips, I'm gonna go ahead and line with this KKW and Mario Lip Liner and Beauty Icon. I am gonna go in with a lipstick before we go in with that Rare Beauty to Top. This is Grace from Bare Minerals. I just picked this up from Sephora. It's a light pink. And I really like this formula. It's just a really pretty light pink. And I'm gonna top it off with some of the Rare Beauty. This is their Nearly Rose Balm. This is like a lip gloss balm hybrid. It feels super comfortable. Has a decent amount of pigment. And then to finish off, I wanna use this Milani Supercharged Revitalizing Face Mist. I mean, it feels like you're really spraying an orange peel <laughs> on, which smells quite nice. And I don't know, it gives you, I guess, like a more healthy glow. All right, guys, here's my finished makeup look using all new products. Let me know your thoughts down below in terms of how the products applied. Hopefully this gave you a little bit of Valentine's inspiration. I could definitely do another Valentine's look, but I wanted to really use the Rare Beauty products and I kind of based my look around that. So let's start with those. The liquid eyeshadow felt like it blended perfectly. It was quite easy to work with, pigmented, didn't patch up. I would say this is more of a one and done kind of product. Of course, you could apply shadows on top like I did. I noticed a little bit of grabbing just on the outer edge but again it's my first time using it I feel like this is for somebody that likes monochromatic to use it all over your lid in your crease you can even use it under your eye match it to your blush and you're good to go so I really have no complaints on this it worked as advertised in terms of the blush I like it more than I thought I would I like the color of course it's a beautiful pink color I will say it's quite emollient but it builds up. So it's not as intimidating as her original formula that I felt like a lot of people were applying a few dots and they just couldn't get it to blend out. This is a little bit more forgiving. Now I did use it on unset foundation. I don't know how it would do with a set foundation. I have to say Patrick Ta is A1, the best formula because you can use it over powders, under powder, set, non-set. I will keep playing around with this. If you have this, let me know. Have you tried it on powder and does it work? I've heard that it skips and lifts and patches. I did not have that experience using it on an unset face, but it just makes it a little bit trickier for someone like me who does prefer to set my face and then go in with powders. I don't dislike creams, but I find them a little bit more finicky and it's not gonna wear as long. So because I didn't set over my cheeks, this is not gonna wear as long as my typical routine would last. For someone like me, 
me, I like one and done. I like to put it on, be done for the day. It's beautiful, I will say. I mean, I do feel like, you know, it's glowy, it's pretty, and I love, love, love the color and the packaging on this, but I really hope that it will work over powder because if it does, I will use it more. Now, in terms of the lip balm gloss, it has a nice medium pigment to it. I feel like a lot of them are gonna look similar on the lips, same as the blush and the eyeshadows because they're all in that pink family. Some more peachy, some more brown neutral, but I think this is a nice, comfortable kind of gloss balm, essentially what they say it is. So you get the look of a gloss, the high shine, pretty pigment, but you get the feel of a bomb. If you cannot stand sticky glosses, I think that you would probably really enjoy this. This is more of a natural product for me, meaning like an everyday, which I think, again, that's kind of the vibe of Rare Beauty. Same with the eyeshadow. Throw the eyeshadow on, throw this on, a little bit of blush, and you're good to go. In terms of the Nudie 2 palette, I've used this a few times off camera, and then, of course, I demoed it today. It's super beautiful. The stars of the show for me are these two shades that are super glittery and high shine right in the middle there. The mattes are very pigmented and blendable, and then you do have a couple metallics that are more of your standard metallic, which is right here. So you'll get that shine, but the glitter ones really make your eyes pop. This is a beautiful romantic tone palette, and I like that it's smaller than her original if you like more curated palettes. So this is a gorgeous palette, especially for Valentine's. The foundation, I have to say I'm undecided on. I will say the shades I got were just a smidge too light for me because I do have a fresh self-tan on, so I can use these when I don't have a tan. I am a little bit perplexed by this foundation. Looking at my skin right now, I actually feel like I look quite healthy. I don't feel like it's gonna slip off. I actually feel like my end makeup looks quite nice. You guys can let me know down below. But this one was a weird one. I had to use about three pumps, not because the coverage was low. I would say it's a true medium, and it is buildable. But what I didn't like is it was smearing, even with the sponge, the brush, and a normal brush I use. Now, I didn't use it with a beauty blender, which I can do, you know, going forward. Morphe did reach out to me and ask me if I needed another shade because the shades may have been a little bit off. So I might ask for a couple of deeper shades and really play with it more. But my biggest qualm about this was just the application was like sliding off. It didn't want to stick to my nose, that kind of thing. But once I got it all on, I feel like it looks pretty good. You guys can kind of let me know down below. So this I'm iffy on. Once it's on, I'm okay with it, but the application, I was a little bit worried. In terms of the sponge, again, I don't know because the application of the foundation, I'm not wowed by this, but I will say I actually do like this. I could see myself using this with other foundations. It's quite a unique shape and it can give you kind of that soft, airbrushed look. So I do believe that I will enjoy this and this will become a favorite. Maybe it just doesn't work with the Morphe foundation and maybe the Morphe foundation isn't a favorite. I'll have to keep trying it. In terms of the mascara, I like it as I said. I know a lot of people are not liking it, so just keep that in mind. For me, this is my go-to when I'm not wearing lashes because it just gives me the volume and length quickly. So I like it, can get clumpy, but other than that, I have no qualms about this either. The Kimchi Chic. I love this powder, the Puff Puff Pass powder. Uh, you get a lot in here, and I picked Translucent 03. It's the perfect shade for me. They have a bunch of different shades, so I'm excited to keep using this. This has been like top drawer for me. It just works. There's a lot of product. I like the packaging because it just comes out super easy. I don't have to like hit it a million times to get the powder out. It's just super quick, convenient, smoothing, and it sets my face. I will keep you updated, keep using their products. I also am really enjoying this ABH, the Brow Freeze. You know what, I really, when it came out, I was like, Ugh, it's just one of those other brow things. It isn't gonna stay, it's gonna feel waxy, it's gonna come out of your brows, but I have to say my brows feel like they're locked and loaded, okay? We're ready to go, similar to the Refi Beauty, but this is just a different component. I think this is basically like soap brows for dummies, basically, for people like me that don't wanna, you know, scrub soap, and then wet the brush, and then this and that, and this and that, it's like, let me just get in there and apply it and move on. So if you wanna try the soap brow trend, I think you would enjoy this. I don't feel like I have a heavy, you know, sticky thing in my brows, but they do feel like they're set down. Pleasantly surprised at how much I love this Danessa Myricks highlighter. Recently, I've been going for more of like the Dior, the Omrezy, the ones that are kind of not a powder, they're like baked down and they don't have any kick up. This was a powder, so I was unsure but this is gorgeous. It is high shine, barely had to apply any, and it gave me that really intense highlight. She has a ton of makeup products. I will link the website down below. Definitely check out her Instagram too. Holy crap, she's talented. 
beautiful, beautiful makeup. So this is a yes. And then lastly, the Milani. I really like this. It smells honestly like you're spraying oranges on your face, like orange juice, but the sprayer is nice. It feels nice and refreshing. This is essentially something I would use just to settle my powders down. So I say this is a yes, it's affordable. Now it's not gonna lock your makeup in. It's not like my Charlotte Tilbury, but this is more of like a give you a little bit of a hydrated look if you have used too much powder or you just want everything to kind of melt in. So that is everything for this trying new makeup. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will link everything down below. Let me know down below what you thought of these products, if you've picked them up, if you're eyeing them. Uh, please subscribe if you're new here. Thank you guys so much again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.